Welcome to the Morris Jamel Mansion. My name is Madam Jamel. I am here at the Morris Jamel Mansion in the Octagon Room. Why do you think it's called the Octagon Room? If you guess that it is a room with eight sides, then you guessed right. Today I'm going to read to you from a book titled Two Friends. Two Friends, Susan B. Anthony and Frederick Douglass, by Dean Robbins, illustrated by Sean Qualls and Selena Alco. Judging from the cover, what do you think this book will be about? Do you know who Susan B. Anthony and Frederick Douglass are? It's okay if you don't. You'll learn a little bit about them when I read the book. Snow fell in Rochester, New York. A horse pulled a creaky buggy down Madison Street. Susan B. Anthony set out two saucers, two cups, and two slices of cake. Frederick Douglass arrived for tea. Susan lit two candles on the table. The friends sat by the fireplace in Susan's parlor. Frederick wore a gentleman's jacket, vest, and tie. Susan wore a kind of pants called bloomers. She liked them better than the heavy dresses women were supposed to wear. Those dresses made it hard to get things done, and Susan had many things to do. As a girl, Susan wanted to learn what boys learned, but teachers wouldn't let her. Girls didn't need to know about important subjects, people said. They should grow up to raise children, and that's all. Susan's mother couldn't vote or own a house or go to college. Few women could. Susan wanted something more. She read about rights in the United States, the right to live free, the right to vote. Some people had rights, while others had none. Why shouldn't she have them, too? Susan taught herself to give speeches. Some people liked her ideas about rights for women. Others didn't. The candles glowed in the parlor. Frederick sipped his tea. Susan asked him about his newspaper. He filled it with his own ideas about rights. Everyone is talking about my new issue, he said. Frederick grew up as a slave in the South. Slaves had to do everything the master said. But Frederick wanted something more. He secretly learned to read and write. New ideas thrilled him. Frederick read about rights in the United States, the right to live free, the right to vote. Some people had rights while others had none. Why shouldn't he have them too? Frederick escaped from his master and headed north. He taught himself to give speeches. Some people liked his ideas about rights for African Americans. Others didn't. Susan liked Frederick's ideas, and he liked hers. He moved to Rochester and got in touch with her. They promised to help each other so one day all people could have rights. The fire crackled. Snow fell outside the window. Frederick and Susan ate their cake and talked about their plans. So many speeches to give, so many articles to write. So many minds to change, they would get right to work as soon as they finished their tea. Author's Note This book imagines what it was like when Frederick Douglass met Susan B. Anthony at her house to talk about ideas. The two became friends in Rochester, New York in the mid-1800s. At that time, slavery was legal in the United States, and so was discrimination against women. Anthony worked hard for women's rights, as did Douglas for African American rights. They made themselves into two of our greatest champions of freedom. Anthony and Douglas both challenged unfair laws. Douglas escaped from slavery and also sheltered other runaway slaves in his house as part of the Underground Railroad. Anthony voted in the 1872 election, even though she knew the police would arrest her for it. The two of them bravely spoke out for each other's causes, making appearances together throughout their lives. They never stopped fighting, and they never doubted that victory would come. Failure is impossible, Susan said. 
Anthony and Douglas won their battles. The United States ended slavery in 1865 and gave women the right to vote in 1920. Today in Rochester, where they used to live, a statue shows the two friends having tea. That was a nice story. I liked hearing about the two friends. Well, thank you for listening, and I hope to see you again at the next story time at the Morris Jamel Mansion. Enjoy your day. Farewell.